to delay the payload just a little bit as we see a little bit more of that lag and latency on my side here thanks to blizzard and we get the latency real bad as the payload is frozen and we see brick wall walking into infinity i'm gonna be real frustrated if i get crashed nope it skips ahead don't worry we didn't miss any fight that was a good hold, I agree. Um, and the payload is jittering up into the field. We are going to hear the Kiriko out for both sides. We're going to see Brickwall using that high noon, getting the big kills onto the support line here of Ganymede. And Aegis is rolling into an area that normally faces or favors defense. But Ganymede is blown apart. OBS Studio disconnected. Oh my god. We're back in... This is a great game. I love it. It's not my internet, I swear. Uh, pardon for the lag a bit. Um, uh, I'll blame that one on Verizon, which is just like a Philly issue, maybe. But this is actually the first time I've really had any problems streaming here, so I may need to look into that. So uh, apologies for y'all dealing with that, but appreciate you uh, sticking through with us here. As we see a very big hold going on here for Ganymede, they need to make a stand here at the beginning of the payload push to point C. We are going to see Tuba to invest their mines. They're going to push everyone they can into them to take the space. Tuba is able to kill Aphrodite and Stelbell. Hawk is able to get the kill onto Chango as they are sent back to spawn. The rest of Ganymede scrambling. Helix isn't able to make it out as the stickies from Hawk confirm the kill. And the payload is already around the final quarter here for ages! Three minutes, and the time bank is an absolute century here on Eichenwalde. We have the copy onto Ram coming out for Hawk. We have the EMP finally out for Helix. They're gonna do what they can with it. Aphrodite getting the kill onto Bob's a good pick on the Mercy. We're gonna see Stelbo looking low from Hawk. They're gonna go and hide behind the payload. Chango getting that beat out. Adding the support they desperately need here into Ganymede to put up a hold. Hawk is gonna fall. We're gonna see Magic Turtle left out alone as 2-Bit rolls away. And Ganymede able to find some stability here at the end of point C. Two minutes, 40 seconds in the bank left. What is Aegis gonna bring to the table? It's a high noon. It's a Kitsune rush. We see the Kitsune out on the side of uh, Ganymede as well. We have uh, Overclock. We have Katsuni coming out on both sides. Here comes the High Noon from Brickwall. Stelbell still holding on to their suffering. Stelbell getting the kill. Aphrodite getting the kill into Brickwall as well. This is good. Two ults invested to counter two ults. Ganymede perhaps getting the advantage here in this ult economy as Stelbell holds on to their crucial, crucial tank ultimate. And they're able to push back Aegis, and we're down to two minutes. They were able to burn up 45 seconds. The cart is very close, but if they can keep winning this fight, they may be able to stop this from being three points and make a winnable condition for themselves. As we see Paradise Aegis here pushing in. Ganymede giving up the space they need to. We do see Stelbell using their Ram ultimate. Tubic getting close, but not quite. Hawk, on the other hand, looking very close to Blizzard, but they're just going to take the L on this fight. Getting close down to a minute now that Paradise Aegis will have left to capture this point. Aphrodite getting a spicy two kill. We're going to see Helix coming up on the Dragon Strike. Hawk with the blizzard as well we're gonna see bobs with the beat and we're gonna see two bit now onto the ram ult we're gonna see aegis maybe timing these fights out well coming in with quite a bit to this last fight we do see uh seraphin finally getting back onto the katsune rush and they're gonna use it early and quickly as magic turtle switch on the back but we're gonna see the blizzard come out as well is still gonna be able to get out no they're gonna die to the ram ult seraphin is <coughs> gonna die as well chango Taking the shot from the railgun. The kills are coming in for Aegis. The cart is moving. It's just going to be Stelbell moving over onto the ball. Hopefully coming out to contest. Will they make it in time? They do. They're going to slam in under the point. Use their shield as the rest of Ganymede comes out to contest. Ults are coming out. Chango has used the beat. Brickwall is able to get the kill on Aphrodite. But Helix has followed up with the kill on the Magic Turtle. It is an even fight. Stelbell looking low. We hear the overclock coming out for Brickwall. They're able to get the kill on the Seraphin. Tubit is able to get the kill on Helix. 
Aphrodite counters with their own overclock. It is back and forth. Who will be the winner at the end of this fight? It seems like defensive spawn will reign supreme here for 07 Ganymede. However, we do see as much of Aegis coming back as they can get. Bob's is down from Aphrodite, moving on to the Tracer. We see the Tracer coming out as well for Hawk, just coming to try and contest this point, but the kills are rolling in. Chango is able to get the kill on the Magic Turtle, a very big one dropping the support. We have three versus five right now for Aegis, and it's looking like we will be seeing 07 Ganymede holding as much as they can here on Eichenwalde and denying the final capture if they can stay on point. It's just two left, the mines are out, the damage is going to be done. Tubit is going to fall, overtime will click out, round one is complete, and with inches to go, Aegis will stop at two points. Score. Zero to two. And that's a, that's a win con on the map for Ganymede, they know what they need to do, they just need to finish the map. Initiating match. They were able to put up some really good defense, I think they're finally starting to figure out what Aegis is bringing to the table. Um, it's not too different each map. You just have to end Hawk's pockets and then you can dispatch Hawk and the rest of the team. And uh, I'm interested to see what Ganymede is going to bring to the attack here on Eichenwalde. And at the same time, what will we see on defense here from Aegis? We do see the cast. We do see... The May, we see 2-Bit switching on over to the Reinhardt, looking for a more uh, hardcore anchor tank here. And we're going to see uh, the Rush uh, comp completed out here by Bob's under the Lucio and Magic Turtle playing the Batiste. So we will be looking... Uh, make sure to use those Prime subs. Thanks again, Chango. Appreciate it. Defense spawn, diff, indeed, one hell of a hold. This is what we wanted to see here for this fight between these two teams. Guys, sub to Stelbel. You know what? We appreciate that too well. Stelbel, if you uh, stream after this one, we will point the raid in your direction. As we see uh, the Rush Comp doing their best to defend here for Aegis, we do see Helix moving on over to the Farah Aphrodite on the Sojourn. And then a uh, very common uh, follow up here for the dive to uh, Pocket Stelbel. We do see 2-Bit moving in to take some damage. We are seeing the rush proper from Aegis here on defense. That's what you need to do. You can't give up space when you're on a rush comp. But unfortunately, we do see the Stelbell contest the point as they force all of Aegis to give up that space. And we see the dive comp moving in. They're able to stage. They're able to point through the lap. But unfortunately, we do see Hawk getting an amazing... Icicle kill into Chango, but Stelbell getting the double slam kill now onto Bob's and Brick Wall. This is a regroup now for the attack as you have the closer spawn. Stubbell rolls out back to the rest of their team. The immortality field is out for Magic Turtle. Stubbell is going to stay in, do some damage, but this is how you dethrone a rush comp. You take away their space, you force them onto the point, and you dive on the Reinhardt or the supports or the cast. Do the damage. Although we are going to see Seraphin going down to Hawk. Again, another very good Icicle. Helix is going to follow up getting the Kona Brick Wall, though. And we see more damage being poured here onto Aegis. Aegis kind of scrambling, trying to find a spot to stay alive. We do see 2-Bit using the Earth Shatter, finally keeping Stelbell stable. And they are able to get the kill, and that will stop a dive comp in its tracks. Dive tank is gone, there's nothing to rally around, everyone's got to back out, regroup, and that's going to be some crucial time taken away from the bank for Paradise Ages. Stubbo though, not wasting any time, is going to roll right in through the front line of Ages, roll back out, get topped off for health, and we are going to see some ults come back in. We're going to see the res come off of Chango as they use their Valkyrie. We're going to see the Kiriko ult invested. We're going to see Aphrodite using the overclock. Tubit looking very low. Aphrodite will confirm the kill. Magic Turtle perhaps wasting that ultimate or perhaps knowing they're going to swap after that. We're going to see the Blizzard invested. Hawk doing the best they can, but they can't fight a whole five stack as they're finally dispatched by Helix. And we will see the capture come in for Ganymede. Actually, Helix will invest the Barrage because we see 2-Bit 
and Bob coming in to contest the point. Bob will die, it's just two bit left. They are eating away the clock though, we're down to a minute, we're gonna see Magic Turtle come in to contest, they get low as well, Magic Turtle will fall too, but looking very low, they're able to get their heels, uh, their wall, yeah, their barrier up to contest, Brick Wall will be dispatched by Seraph and, and the mines lead on point, two bit will finally fall. And <laughs> It just just can't be stopped. Hoxie is a kill. They they can confirm and they will go for the kill onto Bob's to try and slow down or to onto Chango to try and slow down this push just a little bit because Aegis will need to regroup, but they will regroup with probably one of the best high grounds here in Overwatch on the castle point B in Eichenwalde. Aphrodite getting the kill on the brick wall, just cleaning up the space, taking it. This is their point to stage. Paradise Aegis is going to do everything they can to deny this space. But Ganymede taking advantage of the time they're spent fighting. Seraphin getting a lot of uh, progress out on the payload. Helix Snake getting the kill on the Hawk. Claiming air superiority. Brick Wall on the Sombra trying to get around onto point. We're going to see Tubit invest their mines. Seraph is going to teleport out. Stelbo will just bop in. That's uh, damage for their healers to take advantage of for ultimates. <laughs> As both are sitting up at 80, although Helix is gonna die to the mines! How you can fly, Helix? What are you doing? As Paradise Aegis is rolling in to try and take control of this point, the revive is on the Helix Snake. Aphrodite is able to kill Magic Turtle as the rest of this fight takes place here up onto the castle for Ganymede and Aegis. And it looks like Ganymede will be able to take control here for a moment. The payload left alone as they win the fight, but realizing they've taken control, Stellbelt will roll over here to try and counter Tubit and take control of the point, but they see that they're being supported by Magic Turtle. They back off just a little bit to allow their, allow their supports and Helix Snake to come in with the Pharah Rockets. And they just seem to get Tubit off of this point to gain any sort of control. But we're going to see Hawk getting a kill into Aphrodite, and it's immediately a 4v5 now for Ganymede. We're going to see the res coming out. Stelbo taking the sneaky lower path in the castle to get away. Helix Snake is going to fall. Chango as well. And we're into a regroup situation coming down to one minute for Ganymede. This is disastrous. Will they be able to even capture point B as a Stelbo fan? Oh, and a TF2 player. Respect. A Pyromane, by the way, myself, uh, coming into the chat. I like it. And they are a Stelbell fan. Stelbell showing some exemplary ball play as they sneak up behind here to force Tubit and the rest of Paradise Aegis here off the top of the castle. But unfortunately, Hawk is able to get the kill in. And they're rolling in as Hawk drops Helix as well. Magic Turtle able to get the kill onto Seraphin. And they throw away a fight here and use Ultimates with 45 seconds left in. Ganymede is scrambling on Eichenwald. As we have the point very well covered here by Aegis, they know what they need to do, they need to control the high ground, they need to keep all of Ganymede away from the point, but more importantly, they need to engage in the fight, and what better way to do it than a bomb EMP that gets four by Brick Wall, and it's just cleanup time for Aegis. We're down to 10 seconds! Is Aegis even, uh, or is Ganymede even able to touch here? As we see a little bit more of my fun lag, I don't know what's going on tonight, but I do apologize for it. I will do my best to keep letting y'all know what's going on. As overtime has ticked away, we are seeing some ults invested. Tubit is using the mines. Magic Turtle is able to get the kill on the Seraphin. There's the Torb swap coming out of Helix. Magic Turtle getting the kill on the Chango as well. Hawk getting the kill on the Helix. Take Aphrodite returning in kind. But there's just so few left on the point as the Echo copy is going to use their mines. For Hawk, the damage is done, overtime ticks away, and it is map 2 for Paradise Aegis. Fenix coming in as a Bob's fan, we like it however, play the game, nope, hacked away by Brick Wall, and I hope it's this last EMP, and it is because it's so big, and they're able to follow up big on it, they planned it very well as a team. Everyone left hacked a little longer because the ultimate was invested. They didn't quite take that away from Sombra. And Aegis takes that to their second map win. 
<laughs> you smell camo. Oh my gosh. As we see, uh...